Hi, and welcome back, or welcome to my YouTube channel, whichever the case may be. I'm Bones of Bones Art Studio, where I discuss all things art. I recently visited my mom in the old neighborhood, and as I was walking in the building, uh, one of her neighbors who's lived there forever, uh, he knew me as a little kid. He sees me and he's like, hey, I saw you on YouTube. And I'm like, oh, what did you think of it? And he's like, eh, you know, it was, it was good, but, uh, you know, I know you a long time, kid. Can I give you some friendly advice? And I'm like, sure, Leon. Well, what do you have for me? And he's like, you know, uh, I, I, I saw the video with the, the brushes and... It was good, it was good. I'm not saying it wasn't good, but I was thinking, you know, maybe you could get more views if you did like demonstrations, you know, because people, I think people like that. And I'm like, hey, that's a fair point. I, I'm with you. I think people do like to see demonstrations. He's like, yeah, plus I think, you know, all of that stuff, like the philosophy and stuff is good, but like, don't you think you need to show people like you know what you're doing? And I'm like, you know what, Leon, that's a fair point. That's, you know, again, how am I going to argue with that? Like, you can't, he goes, yeah, because like, you know, you're just jabbing on, you're jabbing on. And I like what you're saying and all, but, you know, you're just jabbing on. And you're like a jabber jaw, but like, you got to have something to back it up. Maybe lend yourself some credibility. And I'm like, fair point, Leon. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a video that's a demonstration. So, that's what this video is. It's a demonstration video. As you can tell by the uh, title of the video, um, it is a master copy of an Abbott Thayer painting called Roses, if you're unfamiliar with it. Uh, it is the painting that appears... Um, to the left, obviously, of the screen. Um, now, let me, before we get into the demonstration, preface this by saying, this was not supposed to be the demonstration video. Uh, I had some requests regarding color matching and color mixing, and I was trying to figure out, because I'm new to this, the best way to do a color mixing video. I needed to, you know, set up different cameras, different angles, all the like technical stuff, right? Um, and so I set up my studio and I was gonna do like a dry run. And I thought, okay, well, I'm going to do a study for the dry run just so that I'm exercising my skills while I'm doing this test for the channel. And um, when I got done, I thought, hey, this came out pretty good. And it does show um, my current methodology for working, which is uh, sort of unconventional. Um, it's not my methodology, it's a borrowed methodology, so I'm not innovative or anything, but it is unconventional, there's no drawing involved. Anyway, um, when I finished um, doing the study, I liked the way it came out, so I decided I'm gonna cut this up, I'm gonna edit it, because it is a rather uh, long, it was a lot of footage, but I decided I'm gonna edit it. And what I've tried to do is reduce it without losing too much. Um, and there there's, might be some rough parts in there, you know, but if you bear with me, um, I, I think you'll, you'll like the way it came out. Uh, so I'm gonna do a voice over rather than, you know, just play this really long video um, and uh, I also want to tell you that there were portions where 
the battery power for one of my cameras, the one that was on my pallet, had run out. So um, I just kept filming, actually, with the other cameras because I didn't intend to use it for the channel. But if you forgive that stuff, I think you might like the video. Either way, I hope you do stick around, and, uh, and I hope that you do enjoy it. And I'll be back after the demonstration. Without further ado, here we go. So, I'm back already. I, I did say I was going to do a demonstration, but I also said I was going to see you after the demonstration, which obviously wasn't true. Uh, I can't see you anyway. Um, so that's just an erroneous statement to begin with. All right, so what you're seeing here is my palette. And I'll explain to you what I have on my palette with respect to colors. First of all, I am using oil paint. Uh, and my colors are titanium white, cadmium yellow medium, a new color on my palette, and I'll tell you why I'm, I'll get to why I'm telling you that in a second. Uh, the red is um, primary magenta, and I chose an ultramarine blue. This is not my usual palette, but it's close to my usual palette. Um, and what you see I'm, I'm doing I'll, I'll get into kind of what I'm doing here in, in a second. Let me let, let me get into um, the color palette. Um, and also, as I said in the intro, my intention was to do a color mixing video for the demonstration because that was requested. Um... And I absolutely understand why color mixing videos might be useful and helpful to some. Because uh, I remember when I started painting, I used only the three primary colors and white. And I taught myself to match what I saw. Anyway, um, I don't usually use primary magenta as a red at all, let alone as my primary and only red on my palette. So I was challenging myself. I like to do that. I like to challenge myself occasionally because I think it does a number of things. It absolutely helps me grow um, as an artist. Uh, and it makes me pay closer attention when I do things like this. Like, oh, I'm not going to use uh, alizarin crimson. Or I'm not going to use uh, cadmium red medium. I'm going to use a completely different red. And so the reason this is significant is because, uh, you know, different reds have different tinting strengths. Uh, they have different biases. Um, they, you know, can be completely different than what you're used to. And that is what I found when I was trying to do this study, uh, which is why I had so much footage. It took me an incredibly long time uh, to, to match uh, what I was seeing because I was not able to mix quickly. It took me a long time um, because the primary magenta that I used has such a strong blue bias that it was, it was creating a, a lot of challenges for me. Let's put it that way. I, I love the colors, uh, the color potential, but it made for a very slow study. By the way, this is not a big study at all. Uh, I don't know if you can really tell from my camera angles, which, by the way, I do apologize for. Um, like I said, I'm 
I'm new to this, and um, I'm experimenting with equipment that I already own. Um, that it's a new channel, as you can see. So um, I don't want to go out and spend tens of thousands of dollars on equipment. So I'm going to try, at least for a while, uh, to do what I can with what I have. Anyway. Um, so the substrate that I'm using there, the size of this is small. This is a, like a five by seven. And, uh, you see what I'm doing there? I'm trying to color match. I'm using my palette knife. Um, it's a five by seven, uh, sheet of, uh, it's a piece of watercolor paper. Uh, and it's primed with shellac. Um, I don't normally paint on a substrate like this, uh, but I got to tell you, anybody who's interested in trying uh, watercolor paper with a shellac priming, wow, I really did like it, by the way. It is a really nice surface to paint on. Um, I would not recommend it for things other than studies because... It's probably not the most archival. In fact, there is a potential for delamination from what I understand. But I also have heard from a bunch of artists that uh, have never had problems and they use um, shellac as a primer quite frequently. Um, anyway, I digress. Um, so you can see that you know, there I'm wiping away. It is so easy to wipe away. Well, I'm going back to this substrate and the the characteristics of the shellac. It is. It was so easy. It is so easy to wipe back or wipe away, um, as opposed to um, a an acrylic gessoed surface, which is also um, what I usually paint on. Um, only because it's, uh, something I started out with, so I didn't know any different anyway. Uh, I hear a bunch of people talk about oil primed, uh, surfaces, and, uh, I think I've only painted on an oil primed surface a couple of times, and I, I never found it personally to be a tremendous difference, but... Um, you know, that could just be because I'm a clown and I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, other people swear by, uh, oil prime surfaces. Anyway, uh, I do love the shellac surface. So, okay. In the intro, I mentioned that this is an unorthodox methodology for painting and I said there's no drawing, and obviously there's, there is drawing, but there's no underdrawing. There's no preparatory drawing um, directly on the surface with either charcoal or pencil or even paint. Um, what I'm doing here is I am placing color notes where I see them. Uh, you see, I'm cleaning my palette because it is, I, I'm kind of a neat freak, number one. Number two, I really, I'm working on a, I'm working on a wooden palette, which I don't normally use when I'm painting in my studio. Uh, that palette is actually resting on my usual palette, which is a 35 inch by 35 inch sheet of tempered glass um anyway and it's big obviously 35 by 35 um i like to stay organized even if it doesn't look organized in the video uh in my mind i'm keeping an organized palette if you will um so Whenever I feel it's necessary to clean the palette, I will clean the palette. 
and just start all over again. Um, I failed to mention that I am using Medium, um, which is uh, to the right of the titanium white, and that is uh, Liquin Original, um, which I've come to, I, I kind of like. Um, I am not formally trained as an artist. I never went to an atelier or anything like that, so I don't really know a heck of a lot. I don't have a heck of a lot of experience with traditional oil painting mediums, and I just decided to try Liquin uh, one day, and I liked it, so I continue to use it. It, it is also a secative, which means it it makes the oil paint dry quicker, which is um, it really depends upon how you work. It's something that could be good or could hinder um, your process. And again, I'm sorry there that there's the, the camera ran out of battery and I really wasn't paying enough attention. And like I said, it did. I had no intention of using this for a proper video, so I just kept painting and because I was in the moment, you know. Um, so, as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm I'm placing colors where I see them. No color notes, right? It's not just the color; it's the value and the. Um, the intensity, which, by the way, when you look at this Abbott Thayer painting, it, it is so beautiful. And it, and the thing that I have learned from looking at lots of masterworks and listening to a fair number of uh, other contemporary artists that I admire and looking at their work, listening to them uh, when I have the opportunity to, to hear their opinions on things. Uh, one of the things that I learned very quickly is that learning how to mute colors and really work with very low chroma uh, for rendering what we see in nature is extremely important. Um, and that is so uh, screamingly evident in this Abbott Thayer painting. It is just so beautiful. I absolutely love it. And, uh, you know, uh, and it's it's just a a vase of roses, you know, on a very non-distinct background. It, but it's so so beautifully moving to me. It is anyway. I don't I don't know if it is to to you, the listener, right now. But I'm going to assume that it actually is because I think we're all we all recognize. Uh, the beauty in these things and that's why they're masterpieces um, so I think you saw uh, a couple of minutes ago I took a picture of um, the progress I like to do that occasionally where I sort of document the stages even when it is um something like this which is a study uh, I like to document especially because I'm working on this new methodology um, which is my interpretation because I, I didn't even again I didn't formally study it um, it's my interpretation I, I don't have a better way of putting it right now of um the methodology that I have seen uh, Paul Ingbritson 
of the Boston School method uh, talk about and actually employ. I wish he would do some more demonstrations because I, I really absolutely love watching him work. It is so different than how we are taught to translate nature in that um, what I'm doing right now, like, you know, normally you would draw lines, right? As little kids, we draw stick figures. And those are lines, right? But honestly, there are very few lines in nature. Um, and, and this methodology is you're, you're learning to see things as shapes and values and how the they relate to one another um, and we learn to see things the, in that relationship how they the proportions are derived from those relationships um, so I do realize that um, my proportions aren't a hundred percent absolutely far from it correct based on my painting um when compared to uh mr thayer's painting um but again this this it's it's a study it's an exercise i wasn't really doing it um to be a carbon copy so to speak but i wasn't being ex extremely lazy um it's just just what i did um uh and I'll, i can get more into that in a different video but it is worth taking notice about of how uh this methodology works so, um, as you can see by the, um, the proportions, uh, of the paper in relation to the paintbrush, you can see that I'm not using a very big paintbrush there. I'm using a, it's a size two. Uh, I used three brushes for this painting. I used uh, two size two. One flat, and they're bristle brushes, by the way. Flat bristle number two, and uh, a number two filbert. Um, for most of the painting and then there were I think there were a couple just a couple of places where I used um, like a number two no a number well let me check I like to be accurate um, it's a number one which is what I thought yeah number one round bristle as well just I think for like one or two marks but um, like I had a lot of fun doing this this study um, because this process is still very new to me it's it's really intimidating um, in many respects you know as you can see like you know I, I'm just getting to the flower placement now most of it was about the vase you know and trying to set up the relationships I put a few color notes in for the flowers here and there but now I'm, st I'm starting to go back in you see I use my finger to wipe away um, 
I used my fingers, I used a paper towel, I used Q-tips quite a bit um, to wipe back sometimes. I also do not apply heavy applications of paint. Um, I know a lot of people like to use lots of texture. I am far from an impasto painter. My natural inclination um, is is to use um, much, much less paint rather than much, much more paint. Um, it's just what I do. Um, I noticed when I first started painting, that was just my natural inclination. I make sure that my brush is loaded enough, you know, when I have things I need to really do and concentrate on. But um, generally speaking, you see, I use the Q-tip in there. Um, generally speaking, I don't use... I'm not very heavy on the application. So at the end, I might go with much more on my brush, depending upon if I'm, you know, painting wet into wet. Um, it really depends. Yeah, I think, see, like, I think right there, I may have been, no, that's still not. That was, that was a flat. Like I said, I, I, I mostly used the flat and the filbert number twos. I didn't use the number one round, except for, I think it was two marks, honestly. I don't even remember. Anyway, um, we're, we're coming close to the end here. Just getting some final touches in. And, uh, yeah, I think that was, that may have been, yeah, there, I, I see the round in there a couple of times. I just, I don't remember necessarily, but hey, I don't have to. I'm wiping back a little bit because I didn't like something about it. Can't really tell. I don't know that it matters because you just lost in the moment, you know, when you're doing it. That's the way I paint anyway. It's the way I do anything artistic. I get lost in the process. I think it's good to get lost in the process, no matter what you're doing, because then you're just, you're throwing your entire self into it. Um... So here we are. There's the last couple of marks. Here we go. Thus concludes my inaugural demonstration video. I'd like to thank you uh, for watching. Um, please do remember to like and subscribe. I hope you got something valuable or useful out of this video, uh, even if it was just for entertainment purposes. I really do appreciate your watching. Please leave any comments below uh, if you would like me to do a video on a specific subject. Um, I will try and accommodate. I also want to thank Leo for being honest with me and suggesting that I do a demonstration video. Leo, if you're watching, thanks so much. And uh, I'll probably see you around Thanksgiving. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot. We'll see you soon.